Hello and welcome to another Earnestly Eston book chat. Today let's spend a few minutes with The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This book was originally published in 2020 and I listened to a 2020 Penguin Audio edition that was narrated slash performed by none other than Carrie Mulligan, the uh, exceptional English actress Carrie Mulligan, so that was a great uh, pleasure. Uh, the Midnight Library. You know, I'm not sure how this book came to my attention and how it wound up on my want-to-read list other than the fact that the library, you know, so when I see a title of library, something about library in the title, that catches my attention. And then this concept of the Midnight Library sort of sounded really mysterious and made me want to learn more about it. And then when I read sort of the blurb about it, of course, I was um, I was sold. The book, I'm going to be very careful here to not give away anything that I would do think would detract from a first-time reader's experience with this book because I think it's really important to go on this journey with our main character Nora Seed as it, as it unfolds before her because that's part of the pleasure of reading the book is sort of going along with her on this journey of, um, you know, I guess acquiring some life wisdom in some unusual circumstances. So just to give you an idea of what it's about, though, is um, there is, between life and death, there is a library. And this library contains n numerous and really numberless shelves with an infinite number of books on them. And each book is a version of your life if you had made a different choice somewhere in your life. So, you know, that is potential. We have all kinds of potential to become all types, different types of people. Anyway, our main character, Nora Seed, finds herself in the Midnight Library uh, for reasons I won't explain here. Uh, and she gets the opportunity to open many, many of these books of her potential lives that are occurring um, in multiple, you know, I guess, universes, parallel universes. Uh, so multiple versions of herself that she gets to explore in this way. So how I thought I would proceed with chatting about this book, though, is just to call out a few really sort of inspirational messages that I received while reading this book. Um, th this book is really, um, really about Nora's journey and really her journey of not really figuring out the meaning of life so much as the meaningfulness of life. Um, I maybe if that makes sense. So let's just talk about a few uh, concepts in the book. The first one I want to talk about is a quote from the book. The quote is, so long as there are still books on the shelf, you are never trapped. Every book is a potential escape. So in the sense of this book, we're talking about um, the book, meaning you have multiple different options in your life. And so as long as there's multiple options and you have, um, you know, you're never really trapped. And so to me, this means like you are making decisions every day, every minute of your day, you're deciding how you're going to live. And so that's, a, that's, you're choosing a book uh, with everything you do. You're choosing a book. You're choosing a version of yourself that you want to bring into being. And I think that's just a fantastic sort of inspiration to have. I actually also related it to actual reading books. Um, so the quote is, so long as there are books on the shelf, you are never trapped. Because if you're reading, you know, I'm a reader, and perhaps you are too if you're watching this video. And so books to me are this sort of door into another place, right, that I can experience because I live in, you know, the life that I'm creating right now. But then I can walk through a door and I can experience a life in the 19th century. I can experience something in science fiction way in the future. I can experience um, life as different types of people uh, of all different ages and all different circumstances. And 
And so to me, that's what reading sort of, that's the beauty of reading. There is a trap with it though. And there is one character in the book whose name is Hugo, who is, finds himself, um, he's sort of, um, I think, escaping, right? So he's, experiencing the multiple versions of himself, sort of like our main character Nora is, only he just just doing it in a really superficial way and it's sort of as a way of escape, I think. And so to me, this is also a danger of reading, right? So we want to continue to build our own life. We don't want to escape into these alternate um, other lives. We want to learn from them and we want to experience them and, you know, expand our current life with that knowledge uh, rather than actually just reading books to completely escape into another reality forever, right? So, um, you know, there it could be taken to extreme in that way. So I thought that was really, really kind of interesting. Um, and then there's a, there's, a, there's a concept from the book called, it's never underestimate the big importance of small things. And I think this is one of the main sort of themes of the book. Never underestimate the big importance of small things. There's another another quote sort of from the book that's called, um, that is a pawn, meaning in chess, a pawn. A pawn is a queen in waiting. So a pawn is sort of the lowliest little piece on the chessboard, but it's a queen and, you know, we don't know what it's going to do and what it's going to build. Um, the pawn is a queen in waiting. So I thought that was really, really kind of cool. And this message of never underestimate the importance of small things. The small things in our life that we do um, might not seem that significant, but they have, they can have a really big impact both to others, those around us, as well as to ourselves. And I think that's very important to keep in mind as we build this present life of ourselves. Um, then there is this concept of loneliness. So, you know, Nora Seed, our main character, as we start the novel, she is not, a, actually through most of the novel, she is not a happy person. She's struggling with some mental health, with some major mental health issues. And, um, you know, it, in the book, I think part of that is fueled by social media. And so social media as this engine of loneliness, I thought was, was, a, was a concept in the book. And this is really illustrated really well, I think, in one place in the book um, where we find ourselves in an environment, it's sort of an Arctic desert environment where... Um, noise you know there is no noise and so any noise that you hear has significance and this this related to my experience once i went camping in death valley california and it's this way completely silent there there's not even any wind because there's nothing for the wind to blow through so you don't hear anything at all it's completely silent so in this in, in the book in this arctic environment where noise any noise that you hear is very significant but in our everyday life our modern life that you know this reality that we're all living in right now noise is everywhere and so noise has a lot of has a lot of insignificance rather than significance and so that that under, uh, experiencing that silence as the main character did in this environment as opposed to the noise that she was used to hearing. And part of that noise, meaningless noise, is social media and the abundance of information that we're bombarding ourselves with and how that creates what that does to our well-being, what that does to our mental state, our brains, and our sense of well-being, um, I think is, is very important. Um, there's another sort of uh, point about the small things. Never underestimate the importance of small things. There's a quote from the book at one point that says, she could plant a forest inside herself. So if you feel like you're an empty person, the thing to do would be to plant, start planting a garden. These little things that you can do they might not seem like big things, but, you know, you would eventually plant a, plant a forest, plant, um, plant a garden, plant a forest within yourself with doing little, with doing small things, small things that are meaningful to you. Finding meaning in small things, finding meaning all around you because it is ultimately all around you. And I thought that was just, that was just so cool. So, you know, there's some other sort of, 
um, I think, takeaways that I had from the book. That was about regrets. So our main character, you know, in the Midnight Library, there's also a book of regrets. And how regrets trap people so, so, much, so much of the time, regrets can really trap us, can't they? And how that's really, you know, like a danger. Like if you think, okay, well, my life would have been so much better if I had gone to do... Um, you know, in my case, I, I actually wanted to be an archivist and I did not go and become an archivist, you know, but getting trapped in that, you know, regret, you know, I, I should have become an archivist, you know, my life would be perfect if I had just done that. And I think that's a trap that, that we can fall into a lot of times and our main character definitely fell into, which is to say, um, not only other people seem to have their lives all together and we don't. But the other trap is to say, if I had done this differently, or if I had done that differently, then I would be happy today. And the lesson is, of course, there is another quote from the book. Um, I don't think I wrote that one down, but it's the concept of the quote is, you can choose your choices, but you can't choose the outcome. So you can make all, all these choices. You know, I could go to archivist. I could go and become an archivist in the past, you know, 25, 30 years ago. Um, but... The outcome of that, I have no way of knowing what that would have been. Um, and so you don't know, you know, the uh, outcome. You you can think about choices, and in, you, in your present day life, you make choices, right? You don't know the outcome, uh, what those choices are going to be. So the important thing is to find make meaningful choices. Make the choices that are meaningful to, to you, you know, not others, um, not the um, hopes and dreams of others, which is another trap, I think, that's illustrated in this book, but your own, you know, hopes and dreams. So I just think the book was was such an inspiration to read. It was, um, it was um, I think, um, very sort of, um, well, inspirational. I think that's the best word for it, inspirational to me. Um, I think I will stop the chat with that. I did enjoy that. And I listened to this. I, I did enjoy the Carrie Mulligan interpretation of our main character, um, uh, Nora Seed. So enjoyed it very much. But my next chat is likely going to be History in English Words. Uh, probably this, I'm not quite finished with this. So whichever book I finish next, it'll probably be this one though. And I'll have a chat on this coming up fairly soon. So until next time, take care. Bye.